This is going to be Genesis chapter 24. And Genesis chapter 24 is one of the greatest chapters in the Bible. In this chapter, you're going to see some great typology. Abraham is going to illustrate God the Father. Isaac obviously will illustrate the Son of God. And then Abraham's servant, who's probably Eliezer, will illustrate the Holy Spirit. And then Rebekah will illustrate the church, the bride of Christ. So Genesis 24, 1. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. So many times the world sees being old and well stricken in age as a bad thing. But when God gives you many years, he's giving you a blessing. The verse said the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. So that would include his age. It was a blessing that Abraham lives as long as he does. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. So the eldest servant is probably Eliezer from Genesis 15-2. And he's going to be an illustration of the Holy Spirit in this great story. Maybe it doesn't say his name because it doesn't want to take the attention away from the Father and the Son. Just like the Holy Spirit doesn't want to take away attention from the Father and the Son. Abraham tells Eliezer, he says, put your hand under my thigh. And this seems like a strange thing, right? But the thigh is the strongest part of the body. And Eliezer, putting his hand under Abraham's thigh, has to do with him making an oath. And since the thigh is the biggest muscle and strongest part of Abraham's body, they are swearing by his power. And he says, And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. So there is the oath. Abraham wants Eliezer to go get a wife for Isaac, his son, but not of the daughters of the Canaanites. And this will picture, this will be a picture of the Holy Spirit going after sinners to offer them the free gift of salvation. And when they accept the offer, they become a part of the bride of Christ. So Abraham having Eliezer put his hand under his thigh and causing him to swear by his power, by doing so, that can picture the fact that we are saved by the power of God and kept saved by the power of God. Abraham doesn't want Isaac to marry a daughter of the Canaanites for the same reason that the Lord doesn't want us marrying unbelievers today. And I don't believe it has to do with interracial marriage. I believe Abraham doesn't want his son marrying into idolatry that the Canaanites are known for. Just like the Lord doesn't want us marrying into the world. Second Corinthians 6.14 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what? Fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness. Genesis 24.4, But thou shalt go into my country, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. So Abraham wants Isaac to marry someone that he knows is right with the Lord. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again into the land from which thou camest? So this shows that they wanted a wife who was choosing to marry Isaac of her own free will. It wasn't going to be a forced marriage. He said, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me. And since this is a picture of salvation... It also pictures how we have a free will in the matter of our salvation. We chose the Lord. He didn't automatically make us choose Him or make us reject Him. We chose. Genesis 24, 6, And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou bring not my son thither again. So Abraham does not want Isaac going to the place he came from. He wants to keep him separate from sinners. Genesis 24, 7, The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and he shall send his angel before thee, 
and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. So the same God that dwells in heaven, that inhabiteth eternity, that lives in the sides of the north, the city of the great king, he made Abraham a promise that many people would come from Isaac. And Abraham believes that the angel of the Lord will go before Eliezer and make his journey prosperous because it all goes back to that promise. If Isaac doesn't get a bride and a godly bride, then the promise wouldn't be fulfilled. So Abraham believes beyond a shadow of a doubt that Abraham or that Eliezer will be in good hands and that his journey is going to be prosperous. Genesis 24, 8, And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath, only bring not my son to thee again. So if she isn't willing to follow him, then it isn't his fault, and he's cleared from the oath. You see, it may not be your fault you were born, and it's not your fault that you were born a sinner, but it is your fault if you don't accept the offer of salvation. It isn't God's fault if you're not willing. He's more than willing to save anyone who will come to him. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swear to him concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. Now notice this is verse 10, and he takes ten camels. And we know ten is the number of the Gentiles. And Rebekah is just so happened going to be a Gentile bride, just like the bride of Christ, us. We are primarily made up of Gentiles. The bride of Christ is. Genesis twenty four eleven, And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. Just like the woman at the well in John chapter 4 met Jesus Christ at the well, the beginning of Rebecca's story starts at the well. Our story started at the well. We came to Jesus Christ who gave us living water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Notice Eliezer always points the attention to the father and the son, similar to how the Holy Spirit works. He says in verse 13, Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. So if you're looking for a wife, choose the right place to look. He went looking for a bride at the well, not at the bar, not at the strip club. I mean, be careful where you find your wife many times. I mean, there's exceptions, but in Genesis twenty four fourteen it says, And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall, shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. Now notice he's looking for a bride who is generous. A faithful bride is going to be generous. She's going to offer him a drink and then even take it a step further. She's going to get his camel something to drink without him even asking. A woman should be good at taking care of others. It is work. It's hard working that involved in taking care of other people. So that's something you need to look for in a wife, in a spouse. Verse 15, And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. So the prayer is answered before Eliezer is even done speaking. It says, Before he had done speaking. You see, the Lord is going to match the prayer perfectly. And remember that Eliezer is a picture of the Holy Spirit. Who knows exactly what to pray? And it says in Romans 8, 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So you may not know what to pray, but the Holy Spirit does. Eliezer knew what to pray so well as a picture of the Holy Spirit that what he prays happens exactly. And Rebecca comes out with a pitcher up on her shoulder. She's a worker. If you're looking for a wife, then look for someone who's going to work. Many people believe that being a stay-at-home mom is just being lazy. 
But that couldn't be further from the truth if she's doing what she's doing, or doing what she's supposed to be doing as a stay-at-home mom, and that's a 24-hour job. I mean, I know some women ha have to get into the workforce for whatever reason, but don't knock a woman who's a keeper at home. I believe that's the best option, if you can, but sometimes you can't. But this also reminds us that we should be workers ourselves as the bride of Christ. It says in Titus 2.14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. You're a pe peculiar person if you're zealous of good works. Verse 16, And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. Notice there are some things about Rebecca that Eliezer didn't even pray for. She's very fair to look upon. So she was a good-looking woman. And looks shouldn't be on the top of your list when it comes to looking for a spouse. I mean, maybe you aren't a, a person that's fair to look upon yourself. I mean, maybe to some people, you're not fair to look upon. But this doesn't mean you wouldn't be to some other people. People have different opinions about who they think is good-looking and not good-looking. But looks shouldn't be the priority because that would be one of the first things to go with the person in the marriage. I mean, you get older, you start losing some of your looks. But most likely, if she's a good woman when you marry her, then there's a better chance that she'll be a good woman when you're older together. The same goes for a good-looking husband. He's going to lose those looks probably before... He turns into a bad husband. So look for somebody that's already good. Most likely, they'll stay good. I mean, there's always exceptions, but, you know. But the Bible also says the bride of Christ is fair. So Rebecca, a picture of the bride of Christ, she's fair. We're, the bride of Christ is fair. In Song of Solomon 4.1, it, it, it says, Behold, thou art fair, my love. And Song of Solomon is a picture of Jesus Christ and the Bride of Christ. And also notice it says Rebecca is a virgin in verse 16 in Genesis 24. It might be hard for you to find a wife that is a virgin in the days we're living in. However, you can find a woman that is currently trying to live sexually pure at the least. Even if she's not a virgin, she could be trying to be pure currently. And when reading the New Testament, you'll also see this as another picture of the bride of Christ because we are also called a virgin. In 2 Corinthians 11.2, it says that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So both of them are fair. Both of them are virgins. So verse 16, And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. So here's another picture you can take when looking for a bride. Uh, get a bride that consistently goes down to the well and fills up her pitcher. She went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. The water being a picture of the Word of God, of course. Get, get somebody that's constantly filling their pitcher, constantly in the Word. It says in Ephesians 5.26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Verse 17, And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. The Holy Spirit approached you one day, just like Eliezer just approached Rebecca. He ran to meet me, the Holy Spirit did, and said, You need to get saved. He approached me. In Genesis twenty four eighteen, it says, And she said, Drink, my Lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. So she's generous. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. Notice she went the extra mile. We ought to go the extra mile. Uh, you want to be more than just a profitable servant. You want to go above and beyond. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all of his camels and she isn't just getting his camels drink but she's doing it quickly 
I mean, she's she's not lazy. She's a worker. I mean, when I get a new partner at work, which is quite often, I look at how quickly they're going to do things. The piddle paddle stuff just doesn't work. And she's not piddle paddling. She's doing it quickly. And in verse 21, And the man, Eliezer, wondering at her held his peace, to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. You would think that he would realize this was no coincidence. She is matching the prayer perfectly. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. Now, notice she's going to get rewards for her work. He's going to give her some earrings and some bracelets, just like the Lord is going to give his bride some rewards for their work. And 1 Corinthians three twelve, thirteen. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So he gives her an earring. Obviously, it goes on the ear. And this is fitting for the topology because... Faith cometh by hearing, and he gives her an earring. And you had to have faith when you got saved. You you heard the gospel. You heard the truth of the gospel. Faith cometh by hearing. You believed it. In verse 23, and said, Whose daughter art, art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? So do you have room for the Holy Spirit? When Jesus Christ was born, there was no room for him in the inn. And this, this led many people to preach a sermon on, Do you have room for Jesus? Do you have room for him? In Genesis twenty four twenty five, And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which bare unto Nahor. Which she bare unto Nahor. She said moreover unto him, We have both straw and provender enough, and room to lodge in. She has more than enough for Eliezer, Eliezer to lodge with him, more than enough provender, more, more than enough food and stuff to provide for his needs. Genesis twenty four twenty six. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. The first thing he does is worship the Lord and give credit to him. Verse 27, And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth i being in the way the lord led me to the house of my master's brethren eliezer got in the right way and the lord led him just like abraham said he would he went the exact way he was told to go and he couldn't go wrong going that way it says in verse 28 and the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things and rebecca had a brother and his name was laban and Laban ran out unto the man, unto the well. And it came to pass when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hands. And when he heard the words of Rebekah his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man. And behold, he stood by the camels at the well, and he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord. Wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. So notice Laban gets excited when he hears about the earring and the bracelets and the camels, uh, he knew this was a man of great wealth. Laban comes off as someone who is heavy into material stuff. So he's like, come on in. Of course we have room for you. You see, and Laban can picture, you know, that that uh, TV preacher, the prosperity guy who's only in this thing out of what he thinks he can get out of it. So he thinks he can get up there and, make money off the gospel he's all for it rebecca wasn't like that she was she was helping eliezer way before he pulled out the golden earrings and the bracelets it says in genesis twenty four thirty two, and the man came into the house and he ungirded his camels and gave straw and provender for the camels and water to wash his feet and the men's feet that were with him so notice he has men with him and that can be a picture of a group of saved men going out to add another member to the bride. Just like you do when you go out with a group of Christians and try to win people to the Lord. You've got some men with you. 
Genesis twenty four thirty three. And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. And he said, Speak on. So notice the mission was more important than the meat. The things of God was more important than his belly. His God wasn't his belly. And just like Job said in Job twenty three twelve, Job said, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Eliezer believed that the mission, the word that God gave him, the instructions he was given to do, that was more important than his necessary food. And I guarantee you he was hungry after that long journey. Genesis twenty four thirty four, and he said, I am Abraham's servant. Now, Eliezer is going to go back and tell them the story exactly how it happened. Eliezer is a picture of the Holy Spirit. And when you read the Bible, you are reading the Holy Spirit's account of all these things that happened and will happen. So let's read Eliezer's account of the story and notice how he tells them exactly how it happens. In Genesis twenty-four, thirty-five through 36. And the Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he has become great, and hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master, which when she was old, unto him hath he given all that he hath. Notice that. Unto him, unto the Son, he hath given all that he hath. That's just like Jesus Christ. Because in John sixteen fifteen it says, All things that the Father hath are mine. That's Jesus talking. Like I said, Isaac is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 37, And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. But thou shalt go into my father's house, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Peradventure, the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, The Lord, before whom I walk, will send his angel with thee, and prosper thy way, and thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred, and of my father's house. Then shalt thou be clear from this my oath, when thou comest to my kindred, and if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. And I came this day into the well and said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water. And it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she say to me, Both drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out for my master's son. And before I had done speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder. And she went down into the well and drew water. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank, and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. So notice it says he put the earring upon her face. So the ears, according to the Bible, are part of the face. And it says he put bracelets on her hands. So the wrists are part of the hand in the Bible. So the nails probably pierced the wrists of Jesus, which would still be his hand. And most likely not the palm of the hand, as you see it in a lot of pictures. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay stuck in his wrist a lot better than it would in the hand says in 48 through 50, And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. And then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. So I didn't really do any expounding on all that very much because it's pretty much the same thing that we already went over. But this proves that they believed Eliezer. They said, we cannot speak unto the any bad or good. So they, they're they going to let Rebekah go. 
And if they don't, then in their mind, they're just fighting against God. So they're going to let her go. So they say, Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord has spoken. Well, these people aren't necessarily right with God in the sense of how Abraham is. They had enough spiritual sense not to go against the word of the Lord. And a lot of even lost people are like that. While they may not be Christians, uh, they got enough sense not to say certain things. A lot of times I've heard a lost person say, you know, I'll say the F word. I'll say all kinds of words, but I won't say GD. I won't say Jesus Christ as a cuss word. You know, some people got enough spiritual sense that even as a lost person, they understand that's wrong. These people had enough sense that they're not going to go against Eliezer here. But notice it says, And let her be thy master's son's wife. Isaac is a type of Jesus Christ, the master's son. And it says, And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard, the, heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. So he's giving God the credit, not the credit to himself for taking this long journey and picking the right person, because it was the Lord that dropped this woman into his lap. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. Once again, this is a picture of the Lord giving us silver, gold, and raiment at the judgment seat of Christ. When you work down here, you're earning precious things up there. You're earning a new wardrobe up there. In 2 Corinthians 5, 2 and 3, it says, For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. And then Revelation nineteen fourteen, when we come back with the Lord, it says, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. You're, you're working yourself a new wardrobe by doing things for the Lord out of a good motive. Notice that Eliezer even gives her mother precious things. And I got to thinking about that, and it reminds me of how our decisions can even earn crowns for our saved parents and grandparents for just for raising us right. In Proverbs seventeen six, it says, Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. So there you go on that. Verse 54, And they did eat and drink, he and the men that were with him, and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. So he finally eats something. Mission accomplished. Now he can eat. Notice they rose up early in the morning, and they went on to the master. This trip was strictly business. They didn't start stop to do any sightseeing. They didn't lay up on the beach in victory. They went in, they got the bride, and they left. And her mother and her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at the least ten. And after that she shall go. Now notice that number ten coming up again in regards to a Gentile bride. This could remind us of those people who have tribulation ten days in the book of Revelation. But remember, Rebecca is not staying. She's leaving with Eliezer. She's not staying 10 days. She's not staying those 10 days. Just like me and you, we don't have to worry about having tribulation 10 days, or any days for that matter. It says in verse 56, And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. He's not wanting to wait around. He wants to get that bride to the sun as soon as possible. And they said, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. So they want to make sure Rebecca wants to go. They want to make sure she is going of her own free will. Uh, they don't listen to too much John MacArthur and Paul Washer and Piper and Comfort and all those guys. They, they believe that she has to do this of her own free will. And they called Rebecca and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. Now notice that, I will go. The moment you call on Jesus Christ to save you, you basically said, I will go with this man. You see, the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but he wants you to choose him 
of your own free will. And Rebecca chose to be the bride of the son of her own free will. So 59 and 60, and they sent her away, Rebecca their sister and her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men, and they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. So Rebecca became a part of the promise given to Abraham about his seed being as the stars of heaven. And... And because this is all because she becomes the bride of the son that's going to have all those billions of children come from him. And you see that phrase, thousands of millions. Well, a thousand millions is a billion. And thousands of millions, that could be a never-ending number. Uh, when this world is over and we get out into eternity, there will continue to be people born to those who aren't in glorified bodies. There's going to be thousands and thousands of millions of billions and trillions. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now notice, they followed the man. They followed Eliezer, a picture of the Holy Spirit. So that shows the bride should follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And Rebekah leaves the home she grew up in to be with the son, Isaac, we leave the home we grew up in to go to heaven, to be with the Lord, Jesus Christ. And Genesis twenty four sixty two and 63, And Isaac came from the way of the well, lay Hairoi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. So Isaac was out there meditating. I mean, he didn't have a Bible yet, but he was probably meditating on what light he had from the Lord. I mean, they probably had some things wrote down by Adam and Eve that had been passed down, and he probably meditated on those things. The, but the world has perverted that word meditate. I mean, they think it's a word that has to do with yoga and New Age stuff and Buddha. But, but God wants us to meditate in the Scriptures but Isaac lifts up his eyes, and he saw those camels coming. So we need to meditate, and we need to keep our eyes lifted up. Isaac lifts up his eyes. We need to have our eyes lifted up, just like Rebecca does here in verse 64. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. Rebecca also has her eyes on Isaac, the son. We need to set our affection on things above. We need to set our affection on that blessed hope, looking for the glorious appearing. But she lights off her camel. She got off to go meet him. For she said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. Notice that Rebekah had already agreed to marry a man that she's never seen. Just like you agreed to be a part of a bride of a man that you've never seen. I've never seen Jesus Christ, but I know that He's real. And I agreed to be a part of the body of Christ, to be saved before I even seen Him. It says in 1 Corinthians thirteen twelve, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. So she took a veil and covered herself. We need to be working on covering ourselves so that we aren't found naked at the judgment seat of Christ. It says, And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. So Eliezer tells Isaac all things that he'd done. What if when you get to the third heaven, we get to watch highlight reels of the things the Holy Spirit did in our life that we didn't even know He did? What if we get to watch how it all played out from Genesis to Revelation? But it says, And Isaac brought her... And to his mother Sarah's tent, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So notice, she became his wife when they joined each other physically. They became one flesh at that moment. They had already made a vow. They completed the marriage by joining flesh. And that is true Bible marriage. Getting a marriage license and papers isn't what makes you married. I mean, I think that all that's good and right to do all that stuff right now. 
but there you see there may come a time where to get those papers and to be married you know legally as they say that you ha- you might have to comp- compromise your faith to do it for example in the trib in the tribulation i doubt they're going to be able to be married get m- papers and all this stuff in that sense because they would have to take the mark to do so so therefore they would be making they're just going to have to make a vow and join flesh and that would be all they need to be married um because you know they're not going to want to take the mark of the beast so that they can legally be married in the eyes of people but i know to, today that if you don't get it done with the you know get a marriage license get papers and all that kind of stuff people consider it shacking up but you see there's coming a time when you may not be able to do all that stuff without compromising your faith so here you have the plan of true bible marriage they made a vow she said she'd be his wife he said he'd be her husband he took her to the tent she became his wife 